Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about an issue very clear, uh, near and dear to my heart, and it's why Asian America, some Asian Americans won't support Andrew Yang for president. And yeah, this is I'm Chinese American. My parents were immigrants. Uh, they immigrated here. Uh, my dad was a university student at the University of Akron um, in 1987 when I was born. With my mom, obviously, was in China. And then 1989 happened. That was Team in Square. Uh, George Bush Sr. and Nancy Pelosi made it easy for my, not easy, but um, allowed my dad, who was a university student stuck in America. Uh, they actually prevented him from going back to China, even if he really wanted to. But obviously, why would you really want to when uh, Team in Square just happened and you're a university student coming from America? Uh, probably not the... Uh, best demographic to be going to China at that time. Uh, he made it easy for him to bring me, my mother, from China to America. Uh, he allowed him to have a working visa, which is very important, and then a green card, and eventually become citizens. Uh, and I have a lovely sister who is American, uh, very similar to Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang came from two Taiwanese immigrants, um, and he was born in America. He went to a good college. I went to NYU. He went to Columbia Law School. I went to William Mary Law School. And in the beginning, I felt some of his ideas were a little out there. And I don't think they were, it was because he was Asian or Chinese or Taiwanese. I just thought that they were like kind of weird ideas. Like universal basic income, until recently, I didn't, think would actually help people but now I know it is going to help a lot of people who do need help and that will help the economy as they, it builds them up you know it's one thing to have a place to eat and sleep and not worry about the basics of human needs and then you can improve yourself go for a job interview start a business um, it gives you that flexibility to take a chance and a risk when you know if you live paycheck to paycheck you don't have that you don't have the opportunity to do so so I've come around full circle on that. Now, as for why Asian Americans um, are typically, uh, they're not, okay, I'll just be very blunt. And when I became, um, when I started my own business, I did not get support from the Asian American community. In fact, many of my Asian American friends said it's just easier to work for a corporation. And many of them will. Uh, my dad worked for this worked for the same ca company his entire life, right? And the one thing about the fabled model minority is they're good employees. They don't speak up. They don't ask for raises. They don't ask for a promotion. They don't ask to beat inflation. They just keep silent. Um, they are willing to work overtime and not get paid. They're willing to go the extra mile. So that's the model minority. Um, it's actually you can think about it as the model employee who you can abuse, overwork, underpay, and not promote. That's not me. And when you go against the grain, I was talking to another um, a person who w works as a lawyer at a Chinese shipping company. And you know, I, I said, hey, you can probably open your own shipping company. I mean, it seems like you're running the whole business. He's like, no, no, that's just not me. And so when Andrew Yang gets criticized by uh, other Asian Americans, I think it comes down to there's not enough Asian American bosses. Um, so when you deal with a situation where your boss is maybe uh, non-Asian American, let's just, just assume the boss is white. I'm going to use a very, probably what I would assume is the most common example. You're an Asian American. You went to a good school, got a good GPA, and now you work at a company and your boss is white. Uh, that's a very common scenario. So when Andrew Yang becomes more and more popular, there's going to be more discussion around race. So Do the Donald Trump is very good at bringing up race. China? 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 I mean, he says it in such a unique way that... <laughs> I've never heard anyone pronounce China the way Donald does, but uh, he is a master of uh, bringing up issues about race and countries, right? 
Um, so when you deal with something like uh, the China trade issue, or you deal with um, you know, that discussion where Andrew Yang, it's the same discussion that Hillary had because he was a woman running for president that, that Donald brought up every time he could. Um, if Andrew Yang was the Democrat, and as he gets more and more popular, that issue will be brought to the front of your water cooler discussions about, you know, Andrew Yang. It, it, I mean, it's, he's a Chinese male from two immigrants. There's no, that's fact. And I think that kind of shakes the boat. And that's why many Asians are afraid to support Andrew Yang. Because if he does become the Democratic candidate, uh, who knows uh, what Trump is going to uh, say about race on that issue, especially given China and uh, Hong Kong right now and the NBA and LeBron James, right? You know, so <laughs> he's not a fan of LeBron James, I can tell you that much. It is quite fascinating to see people, and it's true, um, when... I remember when I was in middle school and a spy plane, the U.S. was spying on China, of course, with its superior technology, but then a spy plane had to make like an emergency crash landing in China, and the Chinese government refused to give back the spy plane because they wanted to reverse engineer the technology. Um, and then the U.S. made, you know, the news media made China seem, I mean, China right now, trade deal, tariffs, um, it's bad, but it's not as bad as if they stole your technology from a spy plane that was flying over them. And I remember my piano teacher who was Chinese and uh, her daughter was a little older than me. Uh, they spray painted her, uh, they broke the mailbox, spray painted mailboxes of every Asian, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, it didn't really matter. Um, they just lump them all together. And uh, I remember that being kind of scared and going to my piano teacher for lessons that uh, it was next to the middle school, uh, the Pierce Middle School. So I'm going to call out the middle school by name because I don't think, I think a lot of the people who did it went to that school or have parents who went to that school. So every uh, Asian residence mailbox had, you know, exactly what Andrew Yang said, uh, some of those really nasty racial slurs. And that's because China became on the news. And I feel like people got afraid of, you know, their countries being mentioned on the news because that meant um, your neighbors would feel very angry towards you. And it's true. They did feel angry. They felt angry enough to smash all the mailboxes and spray paint uh, racial terms on homes. Um, so, it, yeah, I mean, that's true anger. That's action. That's ang you're, if you're angry enough to take action... That's very scary. That's a very scary step that you have. That's a very scary line someone stepped over at that point in time. Most people are just angry at ang you know angry on social media, or well, we didn't really have social media back then, but angry like at you know at their lunch at dinner discussion, but they don't take action, right? But when you start breaking mailboxes and spray painting uh, racial terms, that's pretty. I think that's what the majority of my friends are afraid of, is that if you do have Asians becoming more and more popular and they're putting themselves out there in terms of business or, let's say, a presidential candidate even, you will get some last kickback. Um, and you will. You absolutely will. I guarantee you if Andrew Yang wins the nomination for Democratic candidate, yeah, people, it will get racial at some point, if not immediately, and it will be bad. Um, it will be bad. Um, so people are people. Um, they have emotions. They react to emotions they have. And when they're told on media that, you know, China is this really evil country and blah, they can't really differentiate Chinese Americans from China. One, one very good case I have for you, this is the first case you learn in immigration, is the Japanese internment camp case. Uh, all the Japanese in World War II in California was forced, they were forced to leave their homes and basically go to a internment camp, which is not a good place to be. And because they were, it was believed that they were going to be spies, right? And that case, the Supreme Court, before that, you know, some obviously at that point, someone said, no, that's illegal. 
the Supreme Court said it was, a le- it was legal to do that. It's legal to ra- round up all the one per- race of one type of people, put them in camps, because it would you know, be a danger to leave them because they're not loyal to America, right? Some of these people have been there for you know, uh, generations, but they're not loyal enough. So we've got to put them in camp so they don't present a danger. The Supreme Court of the United States said that was right. And no Supreme Court ever since said it was wrong. So it had stood the test of time. So when people tell me, that, oh, you know, it's not about race, it's not about race. Whoa. Have you seen that? Like, that is the first case we learn in immigration class in law school. And it's never been repealed. It has never been directly repealed by the Supreme Court. They never, because during times of war, maybe they were enacted again. Maybe the danger of loyalty, and it's about loyalty, right? So that's, I understand why, but at the same time, if you're scared all your, all, all your life, progress cannot be made if you're scared. And that's what's happening right now. A lot of Asian Americans may be scared because they work at a job where their bosses are non-Asian Americans. And the last thing they want to do is talk about this issue. America is a very, nas- uh, what's it called, nationalistic country. And sometimes you can be a, pa- you could serve in the U.S. Mil- military and be Asian. But that doesn't mean that there are not laws out there or there's not Supreme Court cases like the Japanese internment camp that still exists today. Anyway, bye guys.